Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Introducing today's webinar is myself, Michelle Lutman, and I'm the content and media producer here at Surefire Local. I also have our webinar ninja, Steve Eastlock, with me today, who is ready to help answer your questions. We're excited to welcome Shashi Belamkonda, Chief Marketing Officer at Surefire Local, and Chris Petraco, President of Trusted Photo DC, to do today's webinar on 10 ways to create and promote your video on a small business budget. So before we get started, I'm going to talk a brief, a briefly about Surefire Local. Um, our founder and CEO, Chris Morentis, started Surefire Local with the goal of helping local businesses win the digital space and compete equally. Our mantra is, your web presence is more than just a website. In order to be in all the places customers go to find your business online, you must orchestrate your web presence in Symphony, including your website, social media, local directories, reviews, and more. Today, successful remodelers, roofing contractors, and other home improvement pros across North America use Surefire's local marketing technology and services to get high-quality leads and solve their hyper-local marketing challenges. During the webinar, the marketing team will be taking your comments in the webinar chat widget. You can communicate with us using the question box in your webinar control panel, which is on the right side of your screen. Um, see if you can look, locate that right now and let us know where you're joining us from today. Um, and if you find that chat box, we'll be sending messages and discussion questions to the group throughout the webinar, so periodically check that box for useful resources, links, and questions. Today, one lucky attendee is going to take home a GoPro. If you don't win the GoPro, you don't have to go home empty-handed. Everyone here today is eligible to win a Google Chromecast. We're offering a Google Chromecast to any attendee who schedules a complimentary phone consultation for remodeling your website with Surefire. But we'll get more to that at the end. Um, for now, I am going to pass it on to Shashi, who is going to take over. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, really excited to have everybody on this uh, webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time from your uh, busy day to learn a little bit about video, and I'm very privileged to have with me Chris Petraco, who is president of Trusted Photo DC. Uh, Chris is uh, an expert. Uh, he's going to talk to us a lot about uh, how to quickly take videos, why uh, shoot videos. And one of the things that uh, we keep hearing over and over, and uh, Chris, feel free to weigh in, is every year it seems like everybody joins together and says, like, this is the year of the video. What do you think of that, Chris? Yeah, uh, we were talking before, and uh, I, I think it was 2005 or six, and, and Steve Jobs uh, proclaimed it uh, the year of video with, with Final Cut Pro. So, uh, you know, a decade later, and, uh, you know, it's still going to be the year of video. That's true. Uh, I mean, think of video as it's become a visual world. I mean, people want to talk to other human beings, and it's not possible to talk to everybody, uh, especially your customers and prospects every time. So video is a good medium to, uh, to communicate human to human. Uh, not every video will go viral. Uh, it, uh, does uh, anybody in the audience remember seeing this in the last two to three years when uh, this gentleman was on a BBC interview and uh, it was so cute to see his kids come into the room. Uh, that video obviously went viral, but uh, not every video will go viral. Uh, uh, you need to do have a strategy and uh, put in place some communication tools that help you drive views to your video. Uh, did you watch this, Chris? I did, and uh, the little the little kid that comes in on his little uh, the little roller in the background, he sort of zips around that corner. Is you know, <laughs> it, it makes you watch. It's you know, people always ask, you know, what makes? How can I make a viral video? Well, it's <laughs> it's, it's sort of like how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, you know. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, you know, on his, you know, he's got a staff of comedic writers and and folks, and they they write all sorts of stuff to try to make something go vi uh, viral. Other people yeah, get lucky. So it's, you know, it's not easy, uh, but it is definitely doable. That's true. Of course, uh, for a number of years, this small company uh, that made commercial blenders, and by the way, I think uh, it's some of us who own this blender will attest that it's a great blender, but instead of showing product videos about their blender, they started doing a series of videos about blending stuff that 
you would never put into a blender and uh, I think Chris you were telling me that you use um, you blend mangoes but if you google the term like uh, will it blend an iPhone 7 you'll probably see this video and we'll have this presentation for most of the people who attend this webinar for them to look at some of the examples that we're giving. The takeaway here is that think of video as storytelling like the previous one was very coincidental it was uh, by chance but in this case this is a clear-cut strategy to say like how can we draw attention to the product by not necessarily talking just about the product uh, do you think um, uh, how did you come across a will it blend video um, Chris I remember you know it, it was one of those I mean these videos go back a few years um, and I remember it, it just sort of popped up as you know a video that people were watching, and I, I think I, I had already had a Blendtec blender for a few years. We'd got one at Costco during one of their those sort of uh, when they push a type of product, and uh, you know, and then all of a sudden I saw these these videos, and you know they're throwing iPhones in there and other mobile phones and 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 you know pretty much anything to see if it will blend, and you know it's it's a really good product, and they were trying to you know have some fun with it. But as a kitchen tool, I will attest to it's a very good product. It works well, and the the motor in it is does everything they say it can do in these these videos. Uh, absolutely. And by the way, I just wanted to tell the audience that as you can see, I have a fantastic uh, southern accent. So if you can't understand something that I've said, uh, please put the question into the chat box. And my wonderful team, uh, which is Michelle and uh, Steve, our webinar ninja, will make sure the question reaches me. And Chris, my my mom has been telling me for so many years to talk very slowly, but uh, <laughs> I have to learn that somehow. Uh, the other thing, Chris, I was, uh, and I watch this, I actually teach at Georgetown and I encourage all my students who are doing uh, digital marketing to do this too. Like every week, it's so fascinating to see what are the videos that go to the top of the viral video chart. This is from this week. Uh, with the first one is, of course, Samsung, then the YouTube Rewind, and I can't imagine why, like, for example, the quick recipe how-tos has actually come back. Maybe it is the season. Uh, Michelle, anything uh, anything unusual? Like, why are people suddenly interested in food? Any comments on that? Um, well, I know I'm always interested in food, and it's, it's actually, I see all those videos on, you know, creating, like, recipes on Facebook or whatever, and they're just so, in, like, eye-catching. Yep. I don't know why, but it just really, I just love them. That's true. And uh, one of the takeaways from this is I keep looking at them and seeing all these viral videos. How long are they? And I know we're getting a little ahead, but Chris, do you think like uh, the shorter the video is, the more eye-catching it is? Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, my, my thought on video is it depends. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mo if, if you listen to music, most songs are three minutes long, and mm -hmm. you can apply that very good to video. Anything more than video, if you start looking at the, the trends and the graphs, you know, after three minutes, people start to, you know, fall off. Uh, you know, you want to have your three acts in three minutes uh, when you tell a story with video, and that may be viral video, it may be a product um, a video, it may be a, a video about your business. Okay. Of course, and that's short form. Um, you can always go much longer, but you you need to that story that you're telling in something longer needs to be engaging uh, to the audience. Absolutely, no, this is really great. So let's uh, ask everybody a question now. Uh, as uh, small business owners or marketing managers working for companies, uh, do you? produce your own videos, do you outsource video production or you haven't started with video content? Uh, a, B or C? Uh, do you mind putting that into the chat box so we'll actually know and uh, you know Chris and I can actually talk a little bit more depending on where the audience is and Michelle do you, will you let us know like what kind of uh, feedback the audience is giving us? Yes, absolutely. We've got a few A's and C's. Actually, it's okay. kind of an equal number between A and C. That's actually really good because I'm so glad that we have an audience that's been like uh, 
digging in and trying it out and hopefully if anybody has any stories of success please post it there we'd like to continue to continue to have a dialogue and by the way I have to give a shout out to the marketing team at Surefire local they produce some really amazing webinars like three to four times a month so watch out for uh, emails about that and uh, this is all about learning now the second question that we had is do you have a YouTube channel uh, once again, uh, love to hear from the audience, yes or no. Uh, Chris, uh, wasn't there a stat that YouTube is probably the second largest search engine? Yes, it is the second largest uh, search engine. Uh, of course, it's a Google property, so but it's it's branded as its own entity. Uh, but it's it literally is a visual search engine. Yeah, I mean, I think the tipping point in my mind was the time when Google started putting videos into their organic search results. And uh, I think that uh, still continues today. Like, if you have a video, you have a better chance of getting into the front page results for the keywords that you're looking for because of your video content far more than just uh, text. So I, I, I really think that's another reason why video sh is, is a good medium. Uh, Michelle, well, how's uh, what are the results of this uh, poll? We got a mix of that one too. So some people said yes, and some people not yet. So that means there's hope. Great. I hope you will search for Surefire uh, local and uh, look at our. You, this webinar will be there uh, in our YouTube channel tomorrow. That's another way to actually take the video content and post it in multiple places. Now I. Uh, I can't wait to get started with these 10 steps to creating and promoting your video. Because uh, we, you and I were talking a little bit when you visited our offices where we were talking about like sometimes people say like, hey, I created this video, I got four people. And I'm really wondering, is re video really for me? Right. Yeah, you know, the creating, just creating a video and putting it somewhere and, you know, the, the, thinking that somebody is just going to come across it, especially if you're a small, you know, a small entity. Um, it's really hard without promoting it. There are lots of ways to promote your video you know, within social media, and I think you're going to go over that. Uh, and there's also the the avenue of of of, uh, of ad paid advertising, and that can actually be very beneficial to help quickly grow an audience for you. Uh, and then as your audience grows, you can actually pull back a bit and and organically just watch. Um, your visitors and your and your clicks on the, your video grow. Exactly. The other thing that I wanted to throw out there, Chris, is if you reach the hundred people who you absolutely want to reach through the video, then you really don't care if uh, hundred thousand people are watching your video, uh, which is what we'll talk about in the next few steps. Uh, any comments on that? Uh, the more niche your your business is, uh, the more value you'll have reaching that, that even though it's a smaller audience, if, if 100 people uh, in an audience of 300 people watch, uh, you're doing very well. Absolutely. That's really fantastic. So step number one, what is your story? What is the theme that you want to create video on? I mean, video for video's sake, uh, you and me and everybody in the audience will probably say, like, you need to have, create an objective. Like, take your story, how do you connect it with the business objective? Like, um, this is from a customer of ours, uh, Muth Roofing uh, from Columbus, Ohio. They, I think it is a fantastic thing that they actually went, I mean, you can actually see the roof there and then talk to a customer just after the job is over and say like, hey, what do you think? How was the job? Tell us. You know, creating awareness, uh, the SEO content, people miss that. Like, for example, sometimes when you talk about, like, for example, titles, tags, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, the number one thing that you're creating a video is you're telling your story, again, human to human and everything here is is probably tied to the number one objective is you want to grow your business uh, any comments on that Chris yeah and I, I'm sort of gonna jump ahead and say something here because I think we're gonna cover it but you're talking when you talk about SEO content and and keywords that you you can put when you upload your video to, to Google you know that's gonna drive that SEO um, also increasing traffic to your website 
in the description areas when you put put these up onto YouTube and to a little bit on, on, on Facebook the videos you know putting in that information getting people to go to your website even if they're watching the video in the in the YouTube ecosystem itself or the Facebook uh, ecosystem you you want to drive people to your website and the other quick thing is all these videos you're making um, you're in, hopefully you're embedding them as well on your website and that works as a backlink to YouTube just like if you make sure you have the proper map from Google Maps on your website it's another backlink to a very high um, you know to, to the top of the food chain of, of being Google absolutely so uh, you're going to tell your story number one why are you the best roofer in the area that you serve why uh, what is your story about customer experience what do customers think of you what is your company culture who works for you what do they do what kind of awards have you won uh, and uh, you know maybe sometimes you're creating a video to tell people like hey come and join us would you like to work for this fantastic team and that's your video story step two again who you're trying to reach and we touched upon this a little bit like um, are you reaching homeowners are you reaching your peers do you want to show thought leadership do you want to show people like hey here's what I can do and I have one favorite example uh, Chris, especially like, you know, in the Washington DC area for uh, I, folks, uh, I, I was very curious and um, uh, we must be having people from all over the uh, country on this webinar, but it's really cold in uh, DC today and a couple of years ago my fireplace wouldn't work and you know when the fireplace doesn't work, like I had no clue about what I should do for the fireplace. So I went uh, obviously and did a search for uh, how to get the fireplace working again. And I'm telling you, I saw this really great video from this company that takes care of fireplaces. They helped in great detail about how you can do it on your own. And guess what? The takeaway for me from that video was, I can never ever do it myself. So if this company was in, was in the town uh, where I am, that was a company I would have called. So I thought their strategy was very good. They said, we are the experts, guys. Here's how you should be able to do, uh, uh, do your thing. And at the same time saying, look, you really need to know what you're doing. And this is to our own point. Like sometimes you can create your own videos. Sometimes you need professional videos. But... People like Chris uh, are confident about their art and skills, so they are here to talk about how you can do the video on your own. They're not saying like, hey, you know, you always need to do, you have a professional person. So create a video and try to reach people who need that content for education. Uh, any experience with small businesses that you want to share, Chris, uh, in a similar way? Yeah, um, you know, we work with a few different verticals in the video um, field, and, and one is, um, sort of alternative medicine and um, so acupuncture and uh, massage you know when you're sort of looking at some of these different uh, types of medicine and one of the things that we have found very good it, we don't just make one video we don't make one three minute video what we do is we, we design a campaign that might be if we played it in full 40 minutes long but what we do is we design and we put together say 10 or 12 two to three minute videos that will slowly, um, you know, that they slowly can uh, push out and, uh, you know, build an, build their audience, uh, but also have different topics. Uh, you know, the, the content gets all put together and shot at the same time, so it helps lower costs, but we, we end up making, you know, 10 to 12 videos versus, you know, one longer video or just one or two at one time. Uh, we finding that uh, you know here success when you're talking about when to release something um, you can say you know every week we're releasing a new video well they're already made so it's not like we're trying to hurry up you know every week to get a new video done um, so it's a it's a great way to think about a campaign of video and uh, you, you know even if you're doing this yourself you might want to think about it that way take a weekend a Saturday plan out everything you're going to do shoot three or four videos on a Sunday and then drip them out over the next uh, few weeks. Excellent. Uh, wow, a familiar figure there, planning your production, right? Like, for example, yes, all of us will say, and there was a time, uh, Chris, when, you know, all these uh, 
new video social networks had started and uh, real time video by just shooting and interviewing people as you walk was a, was a great thing now i mean i still agree that can be done especially with live but when you're going to tell a story i think you have to be prepared a little bit uh, and then you got to think of what are, what are the themes uh, chris tell us a little bit about what exactly is the story behind this picture um this picture in, in, in DC, there's a group that I've been a, a member of for a few years called DC Filmmakers. And uh, yeah, it, it's changed a little bit in the last year, but one of the things we used to do was uh, we would do uh, monthly movie shoots uh, in the group, sort of crowdsourced from the organization. But uh, 2014, we had the opportunity to do a TV show and uh, that Cox, um, Cox Cable put on in, uh, in Virginia. And uh, it highlighted all these short films that filmmakers in the DC area were making. But this this shoot here was we were actually doing the promos for it. And the fellow in the middle uh, is a guy named Brian Frankel. If you're looking for an entertainment lawyer in DC, he's very good. Uh, mm -hmm. He's uh, <laughs> the leader of this group. And the young lady on the left is now getting her MFA at the London Film School. So wow. And, and I'm still just sitting here still with. <laughs> So, uh, is this is this your basement? No, no, it's it's uh, the the fellow in the middle, Brian Frankel's uh, basement, okay. Silver Spring. Yeah, I, I I didn't tell the audience that uh, Chris and I met online first, and then we met in person, right? But but on the other side of the cameras to the left here that you can't see is a big green screen set up, and our actors we have four or five actors there, and uh, you know, and we were using some prosumer equipment to do this, and. Uh, you know the end result. You know it. It, we, it was on television, so uh, you know on, um, it, it came out really well. And, and this this is really an example of a zero cost production uh, because we were all volunteering our time to do this, and different people volunteered equipment. But uh, uh, okay. So the takeaway here is: don't think of video as an afterthought. Just think of like, hey, let's plan it. Yes, we're going to do it low cost, and you know, if you write an email to marketing at surefirelocal.com, Michelle has done a couple of videos uh, as the content and media producer and on the team. She's done a couple of videos you'll find on her YouTube channel, and we'll also ask Chris for his equipment recommendations for what kind of mic to use, what kind of stand for your smartphone to use. Uh, these should be very helpful. So send us an email at marketing at uh, surefirelocal.com. Uh, you know, when, what do you do after you produce a video? We talked about, uh, just to recap, we said, step one, what is your story? Just plan that out. Step two, who's your audience and uh, who you're trying to reach? Step three, plan out the production. The most important step four, here is where you can take the video and leave it on your phone for months and months and decide one day to upload. You need to take action and tell the world your story. Uh, I, I put YouTube and Facebook here because I was just reading, I think it was probably in today's uh, new stream, I don't even remember uh, what the source is, but these two are becoming huge. I mean, today the difference between watching TV and watching YouTube, there isn't. I mean, you're seeing TV on YouTube. Uh, I mean, most of my team, when we talk about uh, uh, TV, we're probably talking about something you're watching on Netflix or, or YouTube or Facebook. So Facebook is actually uh, uh, in the has actually launched a video separate video app. So uh, our recommendation and Chris, feel free to weigh in is you need to upload these your video to both these places. Meaning, if you have not already started a Facebook page, which is different from a profile. Every business needs to have a Facebook page. Again, like uh, my team and several people here will can help you uh, with an ebook on how to get started on Facebook. So you need to upload them. Don't take your YouTube URL and put in Facebook. What do you think of that? A couple of years back, that was okay. Um, um, now, go ahead, Chris. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You don't want to do that. You want to post that video onto Facebook, and you want to post that video into YouTube and not co-share uh, the URLs. Um, for one reason, both companies want that content in their systems. And uh, from what I understand on Facebook, if you're, if you're adding a YouTube link to it, it as you're not going to get the same visibility 
uh, on Facebook as if you did if if uh, as if you uh, posted it natively in the in your Facebook feed. Absolutely, and the most important thing, uh, and uh, Chris will you. Hello. Sashi? Hello? Can you hear me? No, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we have to do with uh, YouTube is think about people who are looking for your story. So your title should not be something like video taken March 14th, 2017. It should be how to light your fireplace when to replace your roof, best way to remodel your kitchen, or best remodeler in Washington, D.C. So uh, be direct with the title, because these are the things that Google is going to look at. And one of the tips that I know uh, is make sure in the description you have the URL to your website, probably in the first six words, so that uh, people don't have to click on uh, more to go down and, and search for it. Another thing that, uh, you know, one of my team members here, Lisa and I did very well, uh, was searching for similar videos and commenting and let them letting them know about your video. A few years ago, YouTube actually let you post a video comment. I don't think they do that anymore. And another thing that I wanted to throw out there is, like, make sure uh, you respond to people when they comment on it because the number of comments also helps in pushing the video up in terms of uh, you know search visibility. Anything to add here, Chris? Uh, actually, uh, what about Instagram and Snapchat? Uh, any com businesses using it? Uh, what do you think of that? I, I can tell you as myself, as a business, I use Instagram a lot for uh, putting up short videos. Uh, I think I, I don't use Snapchat as much. I, I really see Snapchat as a tool uh, for major brands. Uh, so if you, you know, in, in a lot of the fields you got, you work with, with say window or roofing companies, you know, the the, the roofing supply company may be doing uh, building their content and pushing it out with Snapchat. Especially, and if you really look at Snapchat's uh, recent IPO, I mean, that's where their uh, their revenue was coming from. The number of brands advertising with them. Um, you know, to build, especially, uh, you know, it's it's really a tool with millennials. Um, and Instagram, I think, is is actually, you know, continues to steal some thunder as a as a Facebook property of what it can do. Um, so, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, in certain segments is good, but it's, uh, you know, and these are all platforms that can be uh, that you can advertise with. And and one platform you didn't mention. Um, which is more for hosting content would be Vimeo, but mm -hmm. that might be a place where uh, if you need to lock down video, uh, maybe make it private uh, would be a good solution. But you're not going to get any, uh, you're not going to be able to advertise uh, with that platform. Absolutely, I, I think I agree with you. And another use of uh, Instagram, I would say, is if you want to make a teaser video from your bigger video, I think if you want to put a 15-second teaser. Instagram can pretty much uh, let you syndicate it to other places. That was one. And I totally agree with you that Snapchat is to reach a your maybe your future customers or your future employees or maybe like an ad. Like uh, we have a fantastic team of uh, uh, headed by Brian and uh, my friend Kerry who look after our, uh, you know, video advertising. Uh, we have, uh, we take care of large companies, uh, uh, sometimes like Anderson Windows and uh, uh, who use video a lot. So uh, you can advertise on TV or you can start uh, organically and through advertising post it to these uh, websites. Uh, Chris, on this, like click once and share all over. Like uh, this, this uh, slide originally when I used to present it uh, uh, at conferences and also to my class at Georgetown used to be share your video on all social networks. Now I'm really excited and uh, Chris, you've seen kind of a preview of this tool that we use at Surefire Social called SurePulse. Yeah. Imagine like uh, you have 
obviously your website is not just your web presence and uh, at Surefire Local we strongly believe that your web presence should work in Symfony and you should have built an entire large web foot footprint which includes maps, local directories and other listings. Imagine you could... So, so I've got a question for you on this on, on, on how when you distribute that out because um, obviously you're putting the URL in there. Um, does that push out the um, the metadata the um, the keywords as well to those different listings. You know I have to check on that, uh, but I'm pretty sure uh, like all the all the data from YouTube passes along. But the best thing about this is like for example, if I have if I'm a small business owner and I have a YouTube, uh, Yelp channel, right, or if I'm on Google My Business or if I'm on uh, some of the other uh, hundreds of directories out there. Imagine I actually have done this for a restaurant friend of mine, logging into every single one of these and adding the video there, right? And when something changes and you need to change the video, you go back and do the same exercise and spend countless number of hours doing that. In this case, you take this video, upload it to SurePulse, which is the tool that I'm uh, showing here, and just click and it goes across all the web presence and then these are all signals that come back. You made a very good point Chris that whether it's a video or a photo make sure that you have the metadata turned on. If you're taking a video with your phone make sure the geographical location is turned on because these are all signals that add uh, to uh, Google and other search engines saying like this is really a local business. We know where the location is or in case of our contractor customers, we know where they do business with. But um, I would strongly suggest you send uh, our team an email at marketing at surefirelocal.com and get a demo of this tool to find out how you can use this to quickly spread your presence on all the local directories along with your video. Uh, I, I have to show you a different version, Chris, that we are uh, going to launch in April, which contains even advertising in that in one single place for you to manage all your marketing. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, you know, creating a YouTube or a Facebook ad campaign, and you're going to talk a little bit about that. Back to our point we made, uh, when you invest time and effort into creating a video, why not just make sure that you get as much of your audience as quickly as possible, specifically if there's a call to action. If the call to action is, hey, want your roof replaced, call us, and you've given a two minute video on how to look for it. Like for example, I had my roof replaced a couple of months ago. I had no clue when I saw this piece of, uh, I mean obviously um, I could, uh, I, I thought this was part of my roof but I, I had no idea like, uh, uh, you know, a storm could actually blow the shingles off and uh, I have to go and check again uh, if any of the shingles have blown off but uh, the roof replace was in, uh, was in a house I lived previously. But uh, when you start educating your audience on when to call a roofing company, especially after a storm and especially when you see these uh, little pieces of your roof on the ground and most of the time they give you a free roof inspection. So create a video on that, why not just advertise it, right? Uh, uh, we've had uh, several of our uh, clients who do this along with everything else that they do with their uh, web presence. Uh, this one, um, I again, like when you get this presentation, you should watch it, we probably don't have time, is to, is Geico's unskippable ad. It, it's, it's a quick ad, it's less than five seconds. I thought it was a good example. Uh, uh, connecting with... Tasha, do you want, to ex do you want me to explain why that ad works so well? Sure, go ahead. So, so if, if you've ever watched these Geico ads, um, in YouTube you know there's a, usually a preview of five seconds if you go to load to watch a video, right? You want to watch somebody's video, it's advertising supported. There is a pre-roll, which the ad does, of usually five seconds you have to watch. So what Geico did was they made people stick around for more than five seconds with these ads because it's the end of the ad and then something happens. And that's something that five second countdown goes on and now you're watching what's going on and you 
watch their whole ad. I mean, it was it was actually a genius way to use pre-roll. Absolutely, yeah, that's great. So you know, connecting with the community and industry influencers, like I consider Chris an industry influencer. Um, you know, just talking about it. Uh, we showed him our product. We showed him the video of Sure Pulse, and and got him to uh, got him to give us feedback. So talk to your community. I mean, I think in the home improvement uh, industry, roofing remodelers, there is a big community feeling. You all know each other. Uh, if if somebody's produced a good video, it, it's a it's a good thing for all of us to start sharing it on social, on emails, on blog posts, and even magazines like that. You know, uh, uh, emails. Chris, did you hear about the stat that uh, emails actually um, uh, e emails actually have a higher open if they have a video in that? Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so this is, uh, of course, our partner, Wellborn Cabinet. When they came in as, uh, when they chose uh, Surefire Local as their preferred digital partner, Angela O'Neill, who's uh, head of marketing there, uh, actually talks about why they chose us, and we actually sent it as a video, and it got uh, really great uh, links. Now, just in case, uh, like uh, Super Bowl, uh, like I said, one of the most interesting examples uh, uh, that I uh, I remember was when I was working for Network Solutions, and Lisa was on our team. We worked on a video called Go Granny, and this was launched in Super Bowl just as we did just as a as a social media only one and this is one lesson that we learned is when you have a video that you're going to launch just prepare for uh, uh, just run it by a focus group ask people like hey what do you think how are things like this and of course uh, this is uh, a Super Bowl ad from this Super Bowl I'm sure a lot of you may have seen it um, uh, and we just uh, just prepare for a crisis is a point on this now looking at post release promotion again i just wanted to say like the previous uh, video that i referenced to did create um, a controversy but it seems that the company was well prepared to answer the controversy uh, but the point of this slide is uh, there are two ways that you can use video and press release if you create a video that you think is absolutely fantastic there is nothing that is going to stop you from creating a press release and sending it out saying hey guys watch our story sometimes you might create a funny video and you want people to see that as well the second point that I wanted to make is if you're going to send a press release anyway why not interview the CEO or interview the person who is uh, the star of your press release maybe it's a customer and include your video in the press release uh, you know, you can actually, there are a lot of industry awards, uh, for example, I'm just going to go to this slide for a minute. This is like almost like an industry award for the best remodeler YouTube videos. So nothing prevents you from actually uh, submitting your video for industry awards. So by the way, Chris, not to put you on the spot here, but uh, you've actually um, awarded a lot of um, uh, you actually participated in a lot of award uh, ceremony, and uh, did I hear it right? Like you actually did a video for NASA. Well, we did a. Uh, we recently did a project for NASA. With technically, it wasn't video. It was a virtual tour of um, of a hangar out at Wallops Island with a uh, uh, a P3 uh, plane they have that flies their Operation Ice Bridge missions. Uh, and we did that in conjunction with Wired.com, which wrote a story around our, our content we created for them. Uh, but yeah, we've done work for NASA. I worked for the, with the U.S. Army for a long time. Um, we've got lots of interesting clients. And we work with a lot of mom and pop businesses too, so you don't have okay. to... <laughs> okay, Chris, you're in big trouble if you don't answer this question. So did you send a press release about all of these clients? Um, Okay, at least that's one thing that you can start doing as homework now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great. No, every one of us, like I actually enjoy these webinars because it's not that I know everything. George Bernard Shaw said, you learn every day of your life except for a short break in school. So all of us here are going to be exchanging information, like people in the audience, like please tell us about your experiences. How have you succeeded? Uh, this is about sharing information. 
Chris is a thought leader, absolutely fantastic at creating video. So uh, put in your questions and Michelle and Steve uh, working behind the scenes are going to get the questions to us and uh, you know put them in the chat box. We'd really love to answer questions. Chris is a busy guy. I'm really happy that we got him here. Uh, he's all the time creating 360 degree virtual videos. He's a Google um, uh, trusted photographer so he can get your business videos onto maps and Google um, uh, uh, maps and Google my business pages. So Michelle over to you. All right thank you. That was great guys. I've definitely learned a lot in this past 40 minutes. Um, so we're going to take a quick poll here today. As mentioned earlier, we're offering a complimentary phone consultation for your remodeling, for remodeling your website for all attendees. And that one, and if you have a consultation, you will get a free Google Chromecast for all who qualify. During a consult, we will sit down with you and review your website. The marketing consult is essentially a one-on-one -on -one session with a marketer that's focused on your needs and enables you to take full advantage of the insights that both Shashi and Chris are sharing today. It will help you put on put you on track to create a robust presence for your business and start generating a predictable flow of new customers. When you attend your consultation, someone from Surefire will help you identify missed opportunities across your online presence from social media to directories to reviews and your website. So please take a moment and submit your answer.